we'll get to the world a bit of a different direction this morning. During the course of time, we'll get up this morning studying and praying. You know, had something mapped out. You know, I always talk about the process. You know, you got to be led by the Spirit of God and what He's telling you to do. You may have a certain program, a certain thesis. You may have something you want to talk about. But, you know, during the course of time, your morning prayer, when you wake up, you know, the Holy Spirit is shifting you in a whole different direction. Because the reason uh, he ships me because there's something I'm catching in the spirit. And it may be coming from somewhere, an individual. You don't know who it may be, but your job is to obey what the Spirit of the Lord is telling you. So if God tell you to go here and do this and do that, just because you have mapped out what you wanted to do um, that night before or that particular night, you have put so much work into that particular study. You know, God said that's, that's something you got to do at another time. But right now, I got a crisis that's going on. Someone need to hear a word. That's coming from you. That's going to help them get through this particular crisis. And it may be just not. It may be just one person. But the thing is, you got to obey the spirit and see what he's telling you to do. You never want to actually do things that are flow with the crowd, where well, everybody expect me to do this. I got this down. I got the way I want to get it. You know, I got everything in place the way I should have it. And then you got everything mapped out just the way you want it to be. Now that's a human error. Because now you got everything memorized, you got everything plagiarized, and I say it all the time, you can't plagiarize the Holy Spirit. When God gives you something, it's going to fresh off the press. And this is why we talk about in the process, when you come into the kingdom of God, you're doing the work of the kingdom of God, you got to make sure you're hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Because anytime you come with your own way, your own understanding, you're going to mess something up. Now, let, me, let me get myself here, make sure I get all my guys in here, and get everybody going. Because one of my stations, I still kind of buffing a little bit, but now we got them in coming in pretty good, and we thank God for them getting on in here. As I said before, I don't want to sound repetitive when I talk about these things. There are things that God is telling you to do spiritually, and you got to be obedient to it. You just can't do what you want to do. You know, you're under the unction of the Holy Spirit. You got to be led by the Spirit. You know, when you're not led by the Spirit, you desire to the lust of the flesh. That means you're doing what you want to do educationally and memory-wise. So now, when you become a conduit for the kingdom of God, what God is getting you, he's used you for an instrument of his use. And when he used you as an instrument of his use, he's telling you something that he wants you to speak to the people. And as somebody somewhere that's dealing with an issue in their life, and God's going to use you as that conduit or that vessel to bring the word to them. So sometimes, man, the woman of God, when you begin to study the word of God and you, you minister the word of God on your on your private time, you're setting up for a show, you're setting up for a broadcast, you're setting up for something you're going to bring before the people. But when you wake up that morning, God gives you this incredible vision. He gives you this incredible mindset to say, there's something I want you to do that's concerning one of my people out there in the world, not just in your congregation, in the world who's listening to you really need to hear this subject and what's going on. They really need to understand the fact of what it is that I need to say to them. And it's going to come through you. God will use you in extraordinary ways. Now, even though this message that I'm ministering to you today may come today, but somewhere down the line, when you're browsing through your computer, you're looking at different uh, services that took place on Sunday, the Holy Spirit may, hey, look, this is one I want you to listen to. Because this is the one that's going to help you dealing with that proclivity or that calamity that's going on in your life. So we got to be led by the Spirit, lest we fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means we fall out of the desires of the kingdom of God and we lean our own way. And the Word of God tells us, lean not to your own understanding, but you have to acknowledge God in all his way and I'll direct your path. That's what he tells us. And we think about the process of studying all night for your word. God does say study to show yourself approval. But anywhere in this book, when God wants to use you as a vessel to reach someone, you've been studying enough to know that you can go to that scripture chapter. Sometimes right off the top of your head, you already know it. Sometimes we study specific things, maybe in evangelism, maybe in salvation, or whatever it may be, dealing with uh, situations in the personal part of people's lives, or just dealing with per things in our own personal lives, how we handle things. You're just studying it. You know, sometimes it ain't just a particular scripture you go to. Sometimes you got to pray and ask God, Lord, what is it you want to show me on today? That somewhere down the line, I may have to use this information later on. But when you come down, and I see a lot of times, and I, and I, and I tell, and sometimes you can see the immaturity in, this, in the ministry. When people, they, 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 they write down, now it's nothing wrong with having notes, but the Holy Spirit will give you better notes. Now you understand what I'm saying? He'll give you the kind of notes you need to hear and you want to understand. Because when we read the notes, 
is notes that what you are pre a uh, prescript. And you can't prescript the Holy Spirit. When you walk into an atmosphere of a unity or a church or building, whatever it may be, or just dealing with somebody out there on the streets, <clears throat> excuse me, the word of God is going to give you the word you need to say in the way you need to say because he knows best what that person needs for that particular time and what's going on in their life. You know, sometimes the word, the word of the, uh, the prophetic has really been misused in a lot of ways. But when you understand the process and you, you, go, you go into a different arena, you got something you done planned out. You got this, what you call this presidential lecture that you want to give to the people. And you, you can't prompt the Holy Spirit leaving off a, a, a teleprompter. You just can't do that because God got to use you as a vessel. and He want to speak to you the way he want to speak to you. So the word of God does tell us when we stand before certain situations. And he talks about wanting to stand before the synagogues. I got to give you the word you need to say. Well, it's kind of the same thing right now when you stand before people and somebody's coming to your church, maybe got a really serious issue going on in their life. And maybe they came to church for a particular reason. The Holy Spirit prompted them to be there with you in a day. And God is using you. And it may be just that one person out of a thousand people that God wants you to say, look, it's one soul that through the word I'm going to give you that can save them, that can bring them out of whatever calamity or whatever problem they're in. So it's not speaking just to Damascus. God's word is so prolific and so, so d dynamic to a point. He said, if I just got to reach one and save one, all the heaven can rejoice. Because God's not so turned about saving the multitude of souls. Listen to me when I'm telling you this. God said one at a time. When you train one, teach one, show one. For one person that you teach can get the revelation of the word of God or go back and tell their friends. And then they'll solve their situations and they'll pray together. They'll trust in God. They'll lean out to their own because they heard an old prophet, old bald head prophet down there in the area of Plano, Texas, that gave me a word in the spirit. And when he gave me that word in the spirit, it transformed and changed. And I'm telling you, man, well, it illuminated. And they went to so many different peoples in the family and they hear about it and they say, this is the way we're going to come out. Most of you know the story about Gideon. Uh, Gideon is going in to get the army and they Gideon goes to bring his army down and those who lap with the hand, those who stood up and lap one hand and watch, you know, they, they got this on, they got honorable discharge. But that thing worked so fast with Gideon, it really, it really mesmerized him. The day he made the separation of the people, that night God said, now you can go to the camp of the Mediates. But he was afraid because he wasn't quite to the point where he needed to be that has the courage to go down there and do what God told him to do. God said, I already separated the army. I already gave you what you need. Now it's time for you to get up and you, you just get those up down there and do what I'm telling you to do. But Gideon was a little afraid. Most of you hear the story about when he went out to the Midian camp, he heard a story about the word of God. One said, his one who had the barley and bread rolled to the Midian camp and he destroyed. He says, nothing but the sword of Gideon. And so when you understand prophecies like this, when God gives you information like this, and it's a last minute resort, you're going to have to really understand that it's not your information, that God is doing something to somebody to help them in a situation that they're in. So you got to lean not to your own, but you got to acknowledge God. I'm talking to somebody in all your ways. So just coming before God with a plagiarized script paper ain't what the Holy Spirit want to give you when it's dealing with a crowd of people. You got to learn how to flow in the spirit. And you got to how to be tuned in with the spirit to hear what thus say the Lord is telling you, because now you become a vessel for the kingdom of God. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this time, this moment, on this morning. As we rise up and come before your throne, Father God, we give you homage in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare your blood all over the world. Let it be like a fresh breath of the four winds of the Holy Spirit, that when it blow, Father God, it will make known to all those in the world, Father God, who have an ear to hear, that what the Holy Spirit has to say that's coming from the kingdom of God. Lord, we ask you to bless this word. Lord, we plead the blood in every direction and every area. We shut down every outside force to try to come in and hinder that which you have given us on this morning to declare and decree your word to your people in such a way, Father God, that they will have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say unto them that's concerning whatever proclivity, whatever calamity they're dealing with in life. I declare this word is already going forth. It will not come back void, but it has already accomplished in all that there are these things I speak not of myself. But the power of the Most High God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know when I when I got into this particular getting into this particular teaching this morning, you know it, it's amazing how God used things the way He does things. It's so it's so um, it's so um, supernatural. It's so much beyond our thinking. 
But the word of God says a way that seems right unto the man, but the end is his death. When you understand what the word of God says, a way that looks right to a man's understanding. This is what a man who's really a bookhead. A lot of people read books. I read a lot of books also. But when you understand what a man has already prescripted and wrote down, you cannot use that in terms of what the Holy Spirit is giving you. A lot of people just teach off the educational point of view. But when God gives you something through the Spirit, and it's a divine plan that's coming through the Holy Ghost, and it's purified and led by the power of the blood, you got to follow that course. And it may not seem right to you at first, but when you lean to what God is telling you to do, I guarantee and declare the word of God to give you everything you need to say concerning his word. Over here, if we go into a few different scriptures here, we're going to talk about a few different things this morning as we get ourselves set up and get going here at HNOC Studios. I want you to look at the word of God over here in the area of the book of John. Now, John was this particular scripture that I wasn't supposed to go into this morning. But I want to get you to understand how in the midst of that small prayer, the word of God said, you can peek into that and give them this. But what I got to give you is going to head off. It's going to give them the direction what they need to have in their life. Because I'm about to speak to someone in the body of Christ that need this word. It's going to help them move fully in the area which God is moving them in. The word of God tells us over here, it talks about the area of obedience. The word of God says something about in the book of Galatians that, you know, how we as men and women of God, we, we should not find ourselves. Let's just go to the book of Galatians for a minute here. I want to go to the book of Galatians, but we're going to come back over here to John, and then we're going to move over to the book of Matthew. Let's look at something. Let's set this foundation, and let's hear what the word of God is speaking about here before we get in order here. First thing about the rule of thumb of the kingdom of God, you got to have honor, and you're going to have discipline, and you got to be able to know how to focus. This is the thing that the enemy's greatest plan to come to the people's life. He throws them off. He pulls them off course. In the process of pulling them off course, they begin to look and listen to what the world has to say rather than what God has to say. And then they begin to get the wrong information. And this is one of the words that God talks about in the book of Matthew. Don't cast your pearls before dogs to swines. That means you don't go outside the body of Christ when you have an issue in the church. And you got to deal with uh, biblical principles. You keep it right there in the church. If there's a dispute between you and your brother, then you solve it right there in the church. Because I'm telling you, you go out there and you tell one of your buddies or friends who's in the world, they're going to give you something that's not really ethical and honorable to the body of Christ. And the word of God makes it very clear that we as men and women got in the commands over in the book of John 13, 34. He makes it very clear that we got to have love. We got to treat them as he have treated the disciples. That's the word of God has to show us that we love our brothers and sisters. That's why the model prayer comes into fruition. Our father who art in heaven, listen to me, how that be thy name, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done. That's a very sacred part right there. We're talking to the kingdom, and we want to be in the will of God. When you're in the will of God, you don't fall into temptation. You don't have debts against your brothers and sisters, and you don't have indebted to anyone else. The Bible says, Our Father who art in heaven, how that be thy name, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done. I'm in the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into no temptation. But when I'm just flying through the, the model scripture, but when you think about the model scripture, about prayer, it makes a lot of sense. Our Father who art in heaven, how that be thy name, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into no temptation, but deliver us all manners of evil, for thou the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we got to understand that. We're in the power of God. We become what we call students of the kingdom of God. Because what we're doing, we're mimicking the word on earth as it is in heaven. So we want to pay close attention to how we carry ourselves as been men and women of God, as been disciplined to mimic how Christ was here on earth. Jesus declared the word that, well, God declared the word over in the book of Hebrews. Where he said, now Jesus declared the word, book, we're talking about the Trinune. Jesus declared the word in the book of Hebrews. He said in the book of Hebrews, I am the author in the finish of your faith. Think about this. He said, I am the author and I'm the finisher of your faith. The word of God decrees according to Jeremiah 29, 11, the plan has got to fall in the John 13, 34. That's the first concept. You got to have love for your brothers and sisters before you can carry out any plan of God. You can't carry out a plan of God with evilness in your heart. Go back to the model of prayer once again. I'm talking to you. Our Father who art in heaven, how that be thy name, thy kingdom come. Listen, thou will be done. You're saying this. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into no temptation, but deliver us from all manners of evil. For thou is the kingdom, 
power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That sets the foundation for a John 13, what? John 13, 34. So when we understand that when we go and we realize that we're supposed to be according to Hebrews 12, the Bible says, I am the author and the finisher of your faith. That means we got to put in place John 13, 34 to have love for the people before we can even go out and even minister the word of God to people. Go back to the book of Matthew. We're going to get over there. Don't cast your pearls before swines. You don't do that. You don't take an issue in the body of Christ and you go talk to one of your worldly friends. I ain't calling them dogs. I'm just saying. They don't have the biblical principles to teach you the principles of the kingdom of God. They don't understand the process of Jeremiah 29, 11. When the word of God said, that's an issue in whatever you're dealing with, with your brother and sister, I know how to get you through it. So you take it to the Father in prayer. How do I take it to the Father in prayer? Tears of Matthew chapter 6 and 6. Our Father who I well, it tells you, you know, when you pray, go into your secret place. And when you pray, the Father revealed those things to you openly. And he rewards you in such a way that you'll understand how you're supposed to walk with the principles of the kingdom of God. So John pretty much lets you know you got to have love. You come back to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 12 tells you, okay, this is how you're supposed to mimic yourself. Because Jesus came here on earth to show you how this work is supposed to be done. It's not that you can't do it. It's not that you can't do it because mercy and grace has been given to you. The power of the pleading, the blood of every calamity in your life. Come on, book of Colossians chapter 2, 13 and 14 and 15. He let you know, you're buried with Christ, now you're raised with Christ Jesus. Well, how is that? I come to the confession. Romans 10, 8, 9. What says thou the word of God near you in our mouth? Now, if I confess the word of God and believe it, it got to be a hard thing. You got to have the word of God. You got to have a circumcision of the heart. It's not the outer appearance. Because the idol parents can give you all kinds of different designs and whatever you want to be that make it seem like it's something else. See, the world can mimic you as being something. But when the heart is right, am I talking to somebody? But when you got the heart right, it doesn't matter what your outside looks like. It's what's on the inside. That's when the word of God said, when your heart and your ways pleases me, then you in my desires. Psalm 84, 11. No good thing will I withhold from those who walk upright. Matter of fact, you go back to Psalm 84, 11. You look at it in the first part. God is a sun and a shield and he protects his word and what he said he's going to do. And no good thing will I, being God, created, designed, and engineer over you, will hold from you. That's if you walk upright. That's, that's his plan. Because his desire is to please you. That's your Proverbs 10 and 22. The blessings of the Lord, that would make it rich. And it added no toil in it. Because when your ways pleases God, the desires come. God fulfilled every need that you have. According to the book of Philippians, Philippians says over in Philippians 1 and 6, you see them on my wall here sometimes, he that began a great work in you will perform that work to the day of Jesus Christ. So how am I going to perform the work? I seek ye first the kingdom of God, all of his righteousness, and then everything I need will be added unto you. You can never boss your vision off a of provision because God got a plan for you. You go to Romans, you look at Romans, the book of Romans, Romans tell you that third chapter in the 11th verse, except I build the house. That means you got to get on your knees. You got to do a little praying, a little folding of the hands, asking God for deliverance and direction, not casting your pearls before people who don't understand the biblical principles of the kingdom principles of how to treat in love. Because if you're going to walk in the gift, you better have a fight. If you're going to walk in any one of the nine gifts, you better have the full fruit of the nine fruits. You can't have a gift and be evil as I don't know what. Or as my mother said, evil as I don't know what. And then say you love the Lord. And then you hate the brother and sister. Well, I'm not just going to talk to them no more. No, no, no. You, 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 oh, you got to go. Oh, you're going to get this. You're going to get this. There are ministers and people out there that's mad at one another. And they feel like they're doing right by not coming to their brother and sister and asking them for forgiveness. I got pastors and friends right now who claim that they want to call me because I made an honest decision to go do something that was right. And what they want to do, well, I pray for your kids, but I don't like you. Now, what kind of stuff is that? Well, how, do you, how did that come in the mix? You're going to pray for my family, pray for my sisters and brothers, but then the one of the guy who's a, who's a preacher, you don't want to pray for him? So that, that's bipartisan to me. You love them, but you don't love him. No, you, you, can't, you can't roll with that one. The Bible says you got to have love. You got to love everybody. Despite for, matter, those who despitefully use you, you got to love them too. It doesn't matter. Because what you're doing as a man or woman of God, you're showing as being a representative of the kingdom of God. Go back to the book of Hebrews. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. God will show you this is how the work is supposed to be done. 
The work that he displayed here on earth is how it's supposed to be done. I keep telling you, it goes back over that John 13, 34. Jesus displayed love to his disciples. When he released the disciples, when he said, I will no longer be with you for a while. I got to go to my father, but I'm going to leave you with a confidence. And when you get that confidence, you got to mimic that confidence as I confident in you. Me being the Holy Spirit here with you on earth, I'm going to show you how you're supposed to get your blessings by treating your brothers and sisters rightly. And despite those who use you, you know, don't worry about that. Fight not yourself because of evil doers, nor even thyself because of the workers of iniquity. But your first initiative is made to reach out to your brothers and sisters. If you want to get blessed, some of us want to use the biblical principles and we want to use that religious stuff. And religion ain't a bad word, but you made it a bad word. Ain't nothing wrong with religion. People made it a religious spirit. They talked about that stuff. Religion is a concept that identifies Christ. You made it bad because people do things in the body of Christ that isn't like God, and then you want to put a label as being a religious spirit. Ain't nothing wrong with religion. Ain't nothing wrong with Christianity. It's just different. Ain't nothing wrong with being a saint. Those words are supposed to be really held, held to a point of high standard. But when you get around people who get educated, they find, well, they got a religious spirit. Well, what, what, what you mean by that? Because I don't understand you got a religious spirit. Because I believe the word of God tells me that all has fallen short. So we all got a religious spirit. We all do some things in our life that don't please God. Listen to me, man. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to see some things right there. Look at the book of Galatians for a moment here. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, look at this part right here. First of all, let's understand the laws of the kingdom. The word of God says in Galatians 5, and let's go with the 14th verse. First, we got to understand this law, and it's like the model prayer. Because when you say the model prayer, you're implementing this particular area that you're willing to what? Walk with the ways of the kingdom and be, come, uh, be in uh, alignment with the, with the laws of the kingdom. The word of God declares over in the book of uh, Galatians 5 and 14. Look at this. He said, for all the law, it ain't Old Testament. It's, it's, new, it's all. It's the law. You know, we're under grace, but we understand there's laws in place that we have to follow. And we have to be able to follow them in such a way that we'd be an example for the ones who follow behind us. The word of God said, for all the law of the kingdom, or all the law is fulfilled in one word. Now, listen to what it says. For all the law in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy brother as I love thyself. Now, look at, look at the 14th verse again. I want you to look at this real good. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Now, he's telling you what the word is. That same word that he's telling you right there, which is the law in place as being a person, a Christian or religious person. You want to take religion negative. I'm going to use religion today to mess some of y'all up because you got too many things you're trying to separate yourself. Well, he's got a religious spirit. Well, he's got, well no, no, no. We're going to get a Christian religion, saints. We, we're going to put it all together because sometimes you want to put yourself as being different and you don't seem to understand that your way was Ephesians also. You, you want to look at yourself as being separate. I mean, too, and everybody else. I'm just talking to you. The Bible says, according to the book of Ephesians, we all once walked the course of the world. Some of us still got stuff in our closet, skeleton bones in there that we still got to try to get out of there. They're falling out the closet. You're going to open some people, don't, they fall all out, out of the closet. But we want to hide that and we want to powder our stuff on the outside as being something before God. Because now we got these TV stream channels and we come before people looking real good. That's why you see me when I come to y'all, I come to you straight up. I don't need a fancy suit. I don't need a fancy this and all that and all the things I have on. I do come before God to be presentable. To make myself, I'm not going to come in there just, you know, any kind of way. But I put on the baseball cap, put on the shirt. Because it ain't about what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. So when we understand the word of God right here in the book of Galatians. Notice this the book of Galatians. In the Galatians, the Bible says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. What is that word? It's love. Now you're going through this. He said, even this, that I shall love thy brother as I love thyself. I shall love thy neighbor as I love thyself. Now, when you understand that, take your Bibles, go back over to John 13, 34, and look at it. And when you look at it, you'll understand what the process of the word of God says, how you're not supposed to walk has been a mimic of the kingdom of God, according to Hebrews 12, the author and the finisher, showing you how the work's supposed to be done, that you ought to carry yourself in certain ways that you ought not go over there. The word of God talks about different ways. We're going to get into that just a little bit. We'll go to the book of John. Over in the 15th verse, this is a law. The Bible says even the law in 14 is love, but he said it's a forbidden law that's in 15. He said, but if you but if you bite, devour one another, take heed that you don't be consumed with one another. Now, go down to the 16th verse. If I say, if I say to walk in the spirit, 
Did not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now see, what he's telling in 16, it really opposes 15, because when you can't walk in the spirit, this is how you're going to act in 15. You can't do that in the kingdom of God. Go back to John chapter 13, 34. Look what he's telling you. You're going to have to present love. You can't walk in the command of God or walk in the anointing of God or walk in the gifting of God if you don't understand the practice of love. Now, God knows the heart. You can't run around telling people they're religious or they this, that, and the other. In other words, separating them from Christianity. You want to separate religion, Christianity, and the next thing you start separating people from the Holy Spirit. Well, they, just, they don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, well, well come on, man. What, what, what was it on Jeremiah 1 and 5? I mean, I'm, you know I'm saying what I'm saying? It's in you. But you got to get it activated. This is why men and women, I can't give you a gift. The Bible says the gift is already there. And the activation comes through a man or woman of God who you pray and ask God in the direction you need to go in. Am I talking to you? And that person, that is the help your character. They can't give you a gift. It's like me being an athlete. And uh, being a, an athlete in my seasons of playing. That I had coaches who can help me get better to what I need to be as being who I claim to be as being an athlete. There's other coaches. On the That's the same thing you got with pastors and teachers. The fivefold. They are it's for the unity. It's bringing the unity of the body together. But the nine gifts are available to everyone. Listen to me. Available to everyone. You can't tell a person that they're not apostle. You're not a prophet. You don't have a trace of of, of, of this, that, whatever, the other. You, you, you don't walk it. You, you don't know that. Because God said that plan is in my eyesight. It's in my hands. See, when you start looking at a man to validate your gift, and the word of God said, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, only I, look, he said, look, the plan I got for you is a good plan, not an evil. It's, a, it's, it's, it's good. If I only honor the thoughts of the plans I have for you, he says it's a good plan, it's not evil. He never told you from the time of creation, and anybody he created, he never told you your gift was jacked up. If you went on and went your own way, and then what you want to do, and you just diametrically uphold the wills and the laws of the kingdom, and then that gift is in you, that's okay. I'm going to bring you on home, and I pass that gift to somebody else. This is why you see sometimes in the body of Christ, you notice this if you see like I see it. Sometimes when a gift comes in an individual and they misuse it for something else, God will take that same gift and then put it in the next generation. What I'm saying? They're children. Or if they miss it, then the children will get it. He's going to get it in somebody. I have saw men, young men, in a church, and I know one specifically, a few of them specifically, have had to save their parents, bring their parents to Christ. The seed which they bored, because they, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say they have no sense, because the world tried to pull away from them what they had, and they used it for other pleasures other than God. The son or the daughter that was born actually got into it more, and then they had to lead their parents who was lost, come on somebody, Back to Christ. And then they had to come to understand as God had given them a vision and dream, this is what I always wanted you to do. But even as that's something always he always wanted them to do, God declared and decreed, whatever the kink of war, whatever the locusts have stolen from you, I will give back double. So your seed may be the seed that's going to bring you where you need to be. I don't believe in all that Christianity. Reason. Okay, fine. If God planned for your life, according to Jeremiah 20, 11, is there, you might miss it, but your seeds won't miss it. If God destiny is for you, or oh, it's going it's to accomplish what it says. Go listen to what he says in Isaiah 55, 11. When he talks about the word, the proceed out of his mouth will go forth. And it will not come back void, but it will accomplish. When he told you in Jeremiah 29, 11, when he told you in Jeremiah 1, 5, that was accomplishing. That was going to do what it said it's going to do. He declared, I am not a God that I should lie. And I'm certainly like another son of a man that I should have to repent. My commandment has been given to you. I heard that brother over there in Houston, Texas, uh, Dr. James Apostle Kickcart, say that. When the word of God declared according to Jeremiah 32 and 17, for the Bible said, is there anything too hard for me to do? But you roll back to Jeremiah 1 and 5. He said, I don't care what your life expectations may have been and how the devil tried to push you off course. My plan is going to do what you need to do. If you be on your dying bed on out of here, I'm going to accomplish what I need to do with you. You may not have fulfilled the things I need you to fulfill when you was here. But in the midst of your death or in your midst of coming around and getting your mind back where it's supposed to be and learning what it should have been, God said, I'm going to get you. No matter you was a dope dealer, no matter you was a dope user, no matter you was a prostitute, no matter you was a vagabond, no matter you whatever you want to do, a cursor or whatever, a blasphemer, God said, look here, that was what the world got in you. But I guarantee you, my plan is going to come to fruition.
You may have been all these things in your life and people may look at you as they've been unfittable and you as a person who's locked in the world may look at a Christian as been unfittable. But I'm telling you, man and woman of God, the plan of God is in your life. I guarantee you, whether you land on your deathbed, whether he got to break you down to sicker with a serious disease, not to hurt you, but to get you to understand, you're going to confess the work that's in you. The Bible deals, I, I said, you can pay him, you can pay him now, or you can pay him later. You can see, listen, you can see the pastor now, or you can see him later. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes people don't get to the point in their life until they get, until they get stressed out. They, they, don't, they don't come to what they need to be until they get stressed out, until God got to bring them home. Now, he won't deny you. In that position, but he wants you to really understand before you were in that position, there's plans and thoughts that I have for you. It's not that he's taking a gift from you, but the gift continues to play up, plays up, and moves on. This is why you see the book of Habakkuk. He said, Look, write the vision on the wall and make it plain for all to see. Well, my, my attitude and my action towards Christ writes my vision, and they see what I'm doing by how I do the work. Look what we're doing at HNOC Studios. We do a lot of great work in here. And when you're doing a lot of great work, when you're building great work, the devil's going to work right next to you. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to speak to you. Whenever you're doing a great work, when the word of God said that he did begin a great work in you, will perform the work in the days of Jesus Christ, he mean that. But the enemy is building the work right next to your work. That means some of the very own peers of your own household will come against you. Even your church members, even your pastor friends, your apostle friends. Well, I hate him, but I love the Lord. No, you got to twist it, brother. You need to say, you need to say, I love you, man, despite of whatever the things may be that mean you have against one another. But I want you to know I'm praying for you. Some people so literally live in yellow back and coward, they can't even do that. They just want to, oh, I just, well, I just leave them alone. No, you talk to that individual about what's going on. You know what's in the back of your mind. Me and my wife study, reach out to people who may have done us wrong or may have said bad things about us. But our job is to send them a Thanksgiving card. Not a Thanksgiving card, but a Thanksgiving hello. When I get that, a Christmas hello, a birthday hello. But you know what? They snuff their jaws shut. And they don't want to say nothing back to you. Because they feel that they're doing the righteous thing. It's not so much of what you ain't doing in your life. Because my, I heard my older sister, Ed Nella, say this one time, your finger work just like my finger work. J am I talking to somebody? Your dollar ain't nothing wrong with your dollar finger. If I can dial you up and say hello to you, a happy Father's Day, whatever going on, why can't you come back and say the same thing? And this is what I'm talking about. How people, you can't let that kind of spirit be in you and being a man of God. And you say you're walking as a man of God, but you hate your brother and sister. So what did God say? How can you say you love me, but you hate the one I created? Let me go, let's get over here. Go to the book of John, my quick. I gotta, I gotta put it to the floor a little bit because it's ten thirty. The Bible says over here, John chapter chap, chapter uh, ten. Y'all turn there for a second. Go to John chapter ten for a second. Y'all with me? Just, just roll, just roll with me. Look what it says right here. Very bad, I say unto you, he that enter in not by the door unto the sheepfold, but clamp up some other way. Listen to what he's saying. Most of y'all heard this subject about on the time it was on Oprah Winfrey. And she says more than one way to get the kingdom. I'm evident you don't know. I'm just saying, I ain't got to get her. More power to her. But when it comes down to this, now I know this. And you're going to try to come up with a little some kind of Scientology or whatever else you're doing, whatever you think it is, then you try it. Hypnosis or whatever you're doing, you try it. And then see how it's going to work out. Because sometimes God got to give you a revelation. See, look here. When you got money, that don't make you no difference. When you admit, see, that's sometimes people's God. Fame, popularity, clicks, interview, that makes them who they are. But I'm telling you, man of God, you better hear me and hear me good. Everybody's got to stand before the kingdom of God. Your riches, your fame, and everything don't count. Sometimes God got to use a sacrifice to get you to see something. I'm not saying anything about anybody, and I pray for those who have lost loved ones. But God got you get you to understand in your life that when you look, when you stressed out before the altar, and you laying there. Whatever way you want to go, you can, you can go to whatever way you want to go. You can, you can go to any, any part of where you think you want to go. But when it comes down to you, whether you cremate or whatever, when you see, sometimes God needs a sacrifice to get you to see you better get your life together. You better learn how to treat your brother and sister right. Because see, the show they went this path, I didn't stand before me, and you looking down and praying over it, you got to be here one day too. Doesn't matter if you go burn up or you go into your casket. I'm, I'm not saying that negative with anybody. God's trying to get you to see. Everybody's got to go that way. But in the process of going that way and being right with Christ, the word of God declares the creeds in the book of uh, what is in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians. But look, death, where is the sting? Death, where is the grave? Jesus, I beat that. 
Though when you don't got to be afraid that when your time comes, and I ain't saying nobody got to go any one time, no time soon. You really want to stay with Christ and do all that you're supposed to do. Why are you with Christ, Jesus? Am I talking to somebody? I just want you to see what I'm saying here. Everybody's got to go that route. Everybody, everybody's got to go that route. And when you get in that, that part right there, when you line up across there like that, it don't matter how much money you got. Oh, Lord, it doesn't help me. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter what your name. Look at all the stars that you may see that passed on. It's been faded in the wind. But what's going to count in the kingdom of God is how you live your life when you was here. It might have somebody. Your applause and all your validations has now got to come from the kingdom. And the kingdom validation is not like the world validation. I guarantee you it ain't. The word of God tells you over here in John chapter 10. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enter in not in the door of the sheepfold, but climb up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Oh, you better listen to him when he tells him right here. He comes back over in this Amplified Edition. Look how he says it right here. Or surely you must summarily, I tell you, I must summarily tell you who does not enter the door into the sheepfold, but climb up some other way elsewhere. You think it's another? That's, that, that was that thing you had to open. That, that woman in the guy, woman of God. I think I open for she. No, open ain't but one way you can. She back. She said, I know it's, uh, it's more than one way to get to the kingdom of God. Oh no, no, no! You got this thing twisted real bad, woman of God. You, I'm, I'm gonna call you woman of God because God gonna have to deal with you to get you back. I don't care what kind of riches you got, how much money you have, and how much they tell you. It ain't but one way you are gonna get there. And let this little bald head pull whatever preacher call you down here plain on tell you. It ain't but one way you're going to get there, Miss Winfrey. And that's the only way you're going to get there. It's through. You, got, you can't go on. You can't go. You got to come through. You got to be filtered through the Holy Spirit. Now, you can kind of any kind of other way of Scientology, whatever you want to, to pick up. Whatever way you think you want to mimic it. But I'm telling you, when you get stressed out, you got to give a count for every idol deed and every idol. God going to run. He going to run the film. But the word of God says in the Amplified Version once again, Surely I must solemnly tell you, he who does not enter in the door into the sheepfold, but if you climb up, in other words, you lying. You want to find some other way to get it. Some people use this old, 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 old uh, what they call it, this old Big Bang Theory stuff. I mean, they, 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 they just got you twisted up. Well, if they teach you that, then that's what you're going to believe that. Because these are unbelievers teaching you in your high school and your the elementary, and they train you with this stuff on through school, then that's what you're going to believe. But what's going to help you is have a solid, grounded house in Christ Jesus. Like what we have with my daughter. They teach all this stuff in school about Big Bang Theory, Scientology, all this stuff. Tell you everything but the kingdom of God. They want to be implementing every kind of book into the into this public school system but the Bible. No, you bring a Bible in it, we will kick you out of here. Now, they'll tell you that. No, if you say Jesus Christ in it, then we, we put you, you stereotyping us. Because we don't believe in that. Well, that's fine. But you can't take away my, my religious rights. They say religious rights. I ain't say Christianity, religious rights. That's why y'all put religion in them. It's religious rights. That's what they tell you. The word of God tells you right over there, if you climb up some other way, elsewhere, for some other quarters, a thief and a robber. Now you want to find, I'm going I'm I'm to go over here. Sometimes people run from the Holy Spirit. They know what is right, but what kills them is the Galatians 5, the flesh. They want to go right with God, but they maybe they may deal with sexual immorality, smoking, addictions, sexual addictions, argument of anger. All these things, they go quietly behind closed doors. But I'm telling you, man and woman, God, when you confess yourself to Christ and you open your heart up, God say everything that's in you is not supposed to be in it. I, I, I declare about let me let me let me let me show you something. Let me, let me, let me we, we, we're gonna we gotta do a part two on this because I gotta get out of here. Let me, let me get you right, let me get you let me let me get you one more again. Let me hit you with this right here. When you look at the word of God over in the area of the book of Colossians, I know I know there's a pastor moving on you. In the book of Colossians, look at the book of Colossians. We look at the Colossians, look at the 13th verse. Go to, go to 12. Look at 12. No, go to the 11th verse. The Bible says it's in the 11th verse in the King James Version. In whom you also are, look at, in you, whom you also are circumcised with the circumcision. Look what he's telling you. The circumcision made without hands. Now, the first part of the circumcision is the coming to the confession of Christ. 
Come into the confession of Christ and then walk therein. Now, if you haven't got it all together just yet, that's where you got grace and mercy. That's what helps you when you deal like a drug addiction. When you deal with those addictions in our life. Grace and mercy has mercy on you. He's not going to pounce on you. He's going to give you time to work as you gain more and more about to, as you turn the wheels in the opposite direction. The more you know about me, the more I reveal to you. The more I reveal to you, the more I clean you. The more I clean, the more you go forth. The more you go forth, the more I begin to stand you upright. When you walk upright, then you're walking in the right direction. And the Bible declares the word, if I walk upright, then God began to bless you. Well, he was a drug dealer. This, how are you getting all that? How are how how you passed me? You don't understand. The Bible said everything the king of woman, the locust, took away from his destiny. God said, I'm about to restore it. Because a lot of rain, I'll be greater than the verse. Am I, am I in that with anybody? The word of God comes back over here again. He said over in the 11th verse, in whom you also were circumcised, but the circumcision made with hands, and the putting off the body, the skin of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. Now, we, we, everybody know what circumcision was on a male, that process back in the Old Testament circumcision. But the word of God says right here, we're going to give you a new type of circumcision. It's going to be the circumcision of the heart. But the circumcision of the heart is going to get you to confess the process of Romans. You don't have to go there. Romans 10, 8, 9. Romans 10, 8, 9. The Bible says, what says thou the word of God? It's on your own mouth. They're going to circumcise your own heart by entering the word of God into you into your heart. And once it begins to germinate, he begins to cut away the things that you're not liking, that you're having a hard problem with, even though you may be struggling with them. But God said, I'm going to take time with you because I know you love me because my, my, my law is if you confess to me, i got to give you the opportunity to get right with me. The Bible says, whoever called on my name, that's what the word of God tells me in Psalm 46. I will by no means put them out. The word of God says, according to Psalm 46, he says, a present help. A very present help, a very present time of need. As soon as you can illuminate and open out of your mouth, God is going to save you. Don't worry about what the religious people say to you. When you're still doing this, you're still doing it. They got a lot of stuff they don't even tell you about either. So the word of God tells that in the book of Ephesians. All of us had demons and devils in our life and we once walked that course and we're still fighting some of them. Y'all don't talk to me, but I'm telling you something here. The Bible says over here in the 12th verse, bear with him in baptism. Now understand the baptism. We don't talk about, it's supposed to be a simile. As I heard the Dr. Dale Wilson talks about that all the time. We talk about it. You go to his, uh, his teaching, Darryl, Dr. Dale Wilson got some studies about the baptism. And now we deal with the process of baptism in such a way that the word of God deals with, when you look at the word of God over in, uh, I believe in, uh, when he's dealing with the lepers, the process of how he cleans the lepers and how he deal with the centurion soldier and how he deal with Peter, the tanner, and all that stuff, coming with Cornelius, all that stuff. That stuff all comes together, that the power of God's word can be sent in the name of Jesus. And I decree by the word of God, by the four winds of the Holy Spirit, you can be cleansed with just on the word. We live in a time now, we're dealing with this process of this, what's called visual stuff. The Bible said, I just speak a word. And if you can believe it and receive it, I will, I will cleanse you. Now, you can go through the physical operations if you want to. But I'm telling you, man and woman of God, if you really want to be saved, you get on your knees in your bedroom and you set yourself down and you begin to pray, Lord, transform me and change. I see the bubbles. Change me for whatever wife I am. God said, I will not only change, but I'll baptize you through the power of the Spirit and I will give you just what you need to clean you up. That's if you walk up right. When you begin to study me and know more about me, I will show you great and mighty things you never known or seen before in your life. Listen to me right here. He said, bear with him in baptism. Well, we also were raised with him, look, through the faith of the operations, is what it says, by the operations of God, man's operations and spiritual operations. Am I, am I talking to somebody? Man's got some physical operations they do. They want to, when they baptize you, they put all these little rings, these classes and all that. Now, you can run, now, ain't nothing wrong with you understanding that. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will do a work on you. Paul's walking to Damascus, and he got knocked out of the road to Damascus. We went to the road call straight. That was some supernatural stuff. You read this, there was some supernatural stuff going on in Damascus. God took a nobody, coming to baptize the man of God with water, but the power of the Spirit was already on Paul. It's just confirmation of water, just a confirmation of initiation. But the Holy Spirit is just a word. The Bible says, I will speak a word in the name of Jesus. And I, I declare that word in and over your life. I'm telling you, man, I'm like, you can speak a word from here to Africa, to India, to Asia, anywhere in the world. And because of your belief, the radiating of the power and the radiating of the belief, it'll be just like a beam shooting in the spirit. It will touch that individual right where they are. I done seen people get tilled across distant lands just on a prayer. 
You try to tell me you got to put your hands on. You got to put your green. You got to put your paws on me. The power of God, according to Isaiah 55, 11. Every I send the word, it's going to accomplish. He didn't say hands or laying on. He said, I send that word. Ask the centurion soldier. Ask the leper boys what happened. You ask these look what happened with Cornelius and the word that came to him. And go get, go get, go get, go get Simon Peter. Now he's down to Tanner's house. And Peter goes to the top and gets some other kind of stuff, dreams before, and got some of the four sheep. Whatever I call holy, don't you call unholy. He said, eat. Peter said, no, I ain't going to eat. I don't know. He said, no, you be quiet. You be built me. Whatever I tell you to eat, you eat. Whatever I call clean, it's clean. When he said, whatever I call clean. Oh, you don't catch that one. He said, whatever I call clean. Not what I have made clean. I put my hands on whatever I, he said, whatever I say is clean, it's clean. Not because of man's physical attributes of the cutting the skin, the flesh, and goats and bulls. He said, when I say it's clean, it's clean. You can run into somebody try to make you clean if you want to. But the power of God will cleanse you. When you begin to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his rights, I declare by the word of God, man, the word of God, he will cleanse you. The word of God comes back over here in this particular 12th verse. Let me finish this out. He said, baptism will be also raised with him through the faith of the operations of God. Who has raised him from the dead. Now now you tell me how he was raised from the dead. The father raised him supernaturally. He didn't do anything else but he raised him up. You know he defeated death. He said do the operations of the raising him from the dead. I, am I telling you somebody? The Bible declares if I walk upright. The Bible declares that when man ways pleases God. Jesus pleased his father. When he pleased his father. God said I'm going to defeat you. In the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus battled that thing. Because the flesh tried to take over. But Jesus said nevertheless. That your will be done. And when you understand that process, when you get on fighting the demons and the devils, and you got a peace in you about the Holy Spirit, I'm going to leave the drugs alone. I'm going to leave the sexual addiction alone. I'm going to leave the alcohol alone. I'm going to leave the lusting alone. Just one at, get them one at a time. Don't try to do them all at once. I'm going to leave the drinking alone. Just one at a time. I'm going to leave the spicy language alone. Just one at, knock them down one at a time. It's like, it's like a season for football, sports. Knock down one opponent at a time, and you find yourself going to your Super Bowl. And that's the kingdom of God. And you'll find yourself coming before people walking with the laws of the kingdom of God. And the Bible declares what it says in Galatians chapter 5 and 14. All the law of the kingdom is all based on one word. L-O-V-E. When you get love, man of God, the blessings of the Lord. Proverbs 10 and 22. That's what's going to make you rich. And it added no toil. The Bible says when a man ways pleases God, there's no good thing without hold from him. That's if he walk upright. He comes back over here. He dealt the process of this area in Colossians in the 14th verse. Look at it. Blotting out the handwriting of an ordinance. Am I talking to somebody? The enemy had an ordinance against you. All the things from the book of the days, you look at Ephesians chapter 2. All the things you may have done behind closed doors or the thoughts you had, the enemy trying to hold that against you. I'm going to show you how powerful the enemy can be sometimes. Oh, I got to get out of here. I got to move. The Bible declares just like this. When you understand, when you walk into a grocery store, you go to a place. Matter of fact, I was out yesterday with my daughter playing top golf. This goes to show you that this stuff is still in you. But you got to keep it under control by understanding the manifesting of God's word. Was that a top golf? In a, in a, and it was a song that came on. I think it was by Shalimar, you know. And it came on, and I was playing golf, and I got the, you know, yeah, I remember Shalimar. Because what did Shalimar do? What did Luther Van Jones do? What did Freddie Jackson do? You ain't, I ain't forgot about these names. I know these names. These love romance games. It was the jams back then. I'm going to tell it like it is. Because during that course of the time, you was in a position of doing something that wasn't right with God. Your flesh was taken over and it was doing things that it wasn't supposed to do. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm trying to say nothing bad about you. Behind closed doors, you did it and some of you still doing it. But I, I can't hold that against anybody. Because I can't throw a stone at anybody. I was there. You, you might be still there, but I got in mind early. You may still be going through yours. But I'm telling you, when you come out of that situation, you see all these old love dating games, how man posted this, woman posted this. You, 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 you get with God. You ask God your desire. Lord, if it be your will, I love to have a husband, I love to have a wife. Whatever it is, you know, whatever you're asking God for. God said, well, I need you to go through this, 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 and this. When you begin to follow God's rules and regulations, I guarantee the Bible said the wide path was out there dating, getting passed around, all the spirits running in and out of you, whatever's going on. But God said, now you get out of that road and come over to this narrow road. 
That's where I'm going to get you at. That's going to be lonely over there. Why? Because all your friends who's in the dating game or whatever the game they're doing, whatever got going on, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be fun to no more when they come over to the single path. Why well, I'm going with Christ. Let them go on over that way. The Bible says your path will still move to your ocean. Just stay on the path. It's lonely. You might be getting a lot of friends knocked down around you. I don't want you to hate your friends. I want you to dislike them. I want you to get on this lonely path. I'm going to teach you and show you something. When I teach you and show you something, and then I'm going to send you back into the wide path. And I'm going to get you to get all the demons and the devils and all those spirits. Not the people, the demons, all those spirits that was in them. And I'm going to train you how to flesh it out of them. And I'm going to use you as a mimic and a conduit to represent me here on earth. The Bible declares the decrees over here, this 14th verse. He says that blotted out the handwriting of an ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. I nailed it to the cross. That's the Masonic laws. When they did things back in the old days, that was a Masonic law that said, if you did certain things, we can post your sin, a jail sentence on the wall. But during the time of completion, we either blot it out of the way by walking, marking through it or erasing it. We let the township know that you're no longer a sentence. Sometimes in certain cities, you do that right now. They got they put, they put you on the wall. They put you in the newspaper. People in jail, been in prison. They show you in prison what they've done. So they paint you on the wall. And then they got another column in there to show you who's released in prison. Some countries and some states they'll do that. But the word of God declared the decree right here. And he look at this area in the 15th verse. He said, if I have spoiled principalities and powers. Now spoiled principalities and powers of Ephesians 121. Listen to me. The enemy has no hold on you. The power of God is in you. The Bible said everything you need is already in you. The Bible said if you confess it, believe it, seek ye first the kingdom of God, understand the principles of the word which says in John 13, 34, walk in it. Walk in love and watch the power of God begin to elevate and illuminate and transform your life. The word of God says right here over here, he said in the 15 verse, I got your back. I can shut down anything. I got your, I got your Luke 10 and 19. I got your uh, uh, Ephesians 121. I got your Romans, 10, uh, Romans 5 and 17. I got it. I give you the ability to call and speak and call things that be not though if they were. Listen to me, man. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to the point where you need to be. You can you can, now you can go for the good stuff, the, the hype you up stuff to make you feel good. But this is the word in the spirit right here. The word of God tells you right here. He said, have a spoiled principality and power to show them as an open tramp and a spectacle in the depth. Then my God said, I'm going to show them up. I'm going to show them. I'm going to spoil the principalities in his power. And I'm going to knock the devil down. Just as I did when I came out, I'm going to go down and I'm going to kick his teeth out. And I'm going to take the keys and I'm going to come back up. I'm going to whoop him. And I'm going to release all the captive. Every sin that's in your life, you better believe me. You better hear this prophet and hear me good. Everything that ever happened in your life, when you understand the power of the blood, of what they can release in and over your life, God said, I will give you a brand new start. I don't care what the judicial system told you, what they said. Bible said, I will re I erase every hand right on the wall that was ever contrary. I will give you a new start. I'll give you a lot of rain that's greater than the first. The Bible declares right here, when he says over here in the area of 15, right, having spoiled principalities and powers and made a show, and there was a spectacle of an open tramp over them. And my, I, I ruled everything that they said you were. You talk about the process of Pastor Paul. and I got, I got to go. I got to go. You look at Pastor Paul's situation. He first started off. That was his earlier reigning. And what he done? The church of the way with the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, all these different things. You see a great work that went on with Apostle Paul. Great work with Ezekiel. Great work with uh, Peter. Great work with John. All of them. Me, all of them had great work. They did great work. But God done something in David. God done something in their life to help them <clears throat> to get to where they need to be. Excuse me a second. And what this apostle is telling you here. If God's going to start a work in you, if you're going to confess and do what he needs to do, it, your, your, the, your, your plans is unlimited. Your vision is unlimited. You can do far beyond more than you can imagine and think of. God will show you things in your life that you've never known, seen, or heard before. The things we do over in this ministry, the way he supports this ministry, the kingdom, is supernaturally. It don't bother me when people come against us. That's what it's supposed to be because I know we're doing a great work. Whenever you are champion in what you do, they're going to come at you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to try to describe your words and tell you this, don't say that, because they're too educational. They, they don't have, they want to read the man's breakdown. They don't have revelation. The reason I can go to this Bible and see what just the man broke it down, I can break it down just as good as him. But he just got his in writing. But remember, breakdown ain't scripture. That's a man's understanding indicates about what the scripture said. That's education. 
But God declared and decreed that eyes have not, ears have not, neither to enter to the heart of any man. Go down to the 10th verse of 1 Corinthians. In that 1 Corinthians, look at that particular 10th verse, in that 2nd chapter 10th verse. He said, for man only knows the things of man. Well, what are the things of man? Man will paraphrase a breakdown of the scripture in terms of what he thought was from a historical history point of view. But when God gives you a breakdown, that's why God said his words are illuminated. The Bible says hidden in the scriptures. That when you pray, God will give you ways and words that no man has never known, seen, or heard in your life. Because how do you do that? It's the Holy Spirit. Because I don't mean what man says. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Look at that particular text verse. Man only knows the things of a man, but no man knows the things of the Spirit. The Bible declared the decree, you got to be spiritual to discern. Well, how do they spiritual discern? I got to understand what Matthew 6 and 6, I got to get in the presence of God. And I got to use Matthew 6 and 32. I got to seek you first in the kingdom of God. And then I got to walk up right. I got to be just like the Psalms 1. I got to be blessed as a man walking out in the council of the God who don't stand in the way of sin. And if I do happen to slip, remember, I'm in the mercy and grace of God. I just say, Lord, forgive me, and I keep it moving. Don't get caught up in it. Keep it moving. The word of God comes down in this particular area of the 16th verse. He said, let no man judge you in meat or drink or the respect of holiday. Listen to me. Holiday. You better, you better hear that one. Expect the holiday or of a new moon or of a Sabbath day. You can praise the Lord anytime you want to praise the Lord. Just because, now, nah, now, nah, a lot of people, they go against me on this, but I mean, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with Yom Kippur and all those days, you know, uh, 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 it ain't nothing wrong with that, but that that's gonna, not going to get you in the kingdom. I'm just, I'm just telling you. A lot of people don't want me to talk about this. They may, a lot of them may get mad about this, but your judging as being a Christian ain't based on a holiday or a certain festival or festivity. Your faith is being what you look with on Christ. Is your confession. When a man ways pleases and love the Lord, the God said, I will give you. When you when you love the Lord, the Bible said the blessings of the Lord will make you rich. Now you can't hold your day, well, I go to church on Sunday. Or I go to I, I celebrate Yom Kippur. Uh, I, I, I the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm just saying I, I, these are holy days of Christ put in position. But I'm just saying, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just, a lot of people get upset at me when I talk about this because they got such an educational sense about it and it makes them sound good when they teach about it. But God said, that ain't it. The Bible says, according to the word of God, if you confess the word of God with your mouth and believe in your heart, when you understand that word of God, when it says over here, looking over here, and I look at this scripture right here again, I'm going to show you something here again. I got to, I got to move over in the area of, um, over in the area of Colossians. You go to Colossians, go to 16 verse. Look what it says in the Amplified Version in the 16th verse. And I want to make sure you get an understanding because I don't say this possible. It's mis teaching. I'm teaching you right. I'm just telling you things that men don't want to tell you. Just like the process of other things you do in your life, they don't want to tell you. Dealing with the lust of the flesh. Everybody's got that. That's a, that's a, a, tra a spirit of attraction was in you. That's how you attract. But you got to know how to maintain it and keep it governed so you don't fall out of line with it. Everything you got was given to you by God. But you can't abuse it. Am I talking to somebody? Look at the word of God says over here. He said, let, he said, therefore, let no one set in judgment on you in matters of food or drink. Now, we talk about, I'm just, I, I know I got to go. We're talking about Cornelius. The word of God came to Cornelius' house and he talked to him and he told you, go, go get Peter. And Peter was down at the tanner's house. And Peter was just about ready to go and eat. And he went up to the top. And Peter went to go to sleep. Uh, I ain't, uh, Peter just followed the rules and the regulations of what's going on, but not a Holy Spirit is in session here. Peter said, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Peter said, P the Lord said to Peter, Peter, rise and eat. Peter saw things that he wasn't fitable for him to eat according to, or I'm going to say his, his condition, his tradition. I ain't going to say religion. So it's called his tradition. I'm not supposed to eat this hoof animal, scaled animals, got fish and all that. I'm supposed to eat that stuff. Peter kind of got at Christ. I mean, God. And Peter, God came back at him. What I tell you to eat, you eat. What I say is clean, it's clean. When I say the man is clean based on, see, when God called, listen to me. When God calls you clean, and they look at where your lifestyle is going to be, and that person who's supposed to be so Christian, so saved, look at you. No, nah, they can't be saved. Well, he saved your crazy self. So how can he save him? If he saved you, and you just as worse in the physical as he is in the physical, he's just showing he is more, but you're showing yours less. 
So you got the right to look down on him because he's in a, a worse state in terms of the physicality and you're in a better state because you got your, you go to church, you got your body, you got your bald head, you got your shiny shoes on. No, brother, you got a crack in your foundation too. Just like he got a crack in his foundation. Your stuff tore up too because everybody got a king and a fool in them. Whatever you talk, that's what's going to be. So you got fools in the church. I'm just going to tell you straight up. You got fools in the poor pit. You got, you got fools. It's fools now. Because everybody got a king and a fool. Whatever one you talk to is what's going to come out. I'm just telling you. I mean, I, to me, I'm not, I'm not the person being out. I mean, you, 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 sometimes you, you were talking crazy to me. Like, that ain't got no sense. Let me out. Let me out. I'm going to hurt you and heal you. I'm just saying. But you don't got nobody to just walk over you. You don't to walk over you. You don't know no doormat. You get people up off you. But you do it in the right way. But you do it in a stern way. And don't put your hands on me. That's what I'm saying. Don't put your hands on me. But I'm just I'm just speaking to you. You're not supposed to do that. You don't you don't abuse your brothers and sisters. You don't do that. Now if you want to get a matter straight, then you get it straight. Especially if it's inside the church. This is where the guy talks about the process of don't catch your pearls before swine. If there's a matter going on with you and a person or a pastor or leader, then you settle it among brothers and sisters. Don't go outside to the dogs. I ain't calling them people dogs. I'm just saying the people who's unlearned about the principles of the kingdom of God and go talk about how you should handle a principle of the kingdom of God. No, you settle among your brothers and sisters in church. You deal with it. If, you, if you're not coward enough, you know, if you're not lily living, sometimes you just got to know be man enough and say, hey, man, look, you know, I did something wrong. I'm sorry about that. God bless you. Da, 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 da. Now, some people hold that girl. They're clear, they're, they keep it. They got, they got rocks in their jaws. Oh, I ain't going to talk to you. But, but, but let's move on here. The word of God says in the 16th verse, he said, well, let no man judge you. It's in the Colossians too. Let no man judge you on you matters of drink, food, drink, or what regards of the festival of, of uh, regards up to a, a feast day or a new moon or Sabbath. Now, uh, I really want you to read on in this because we got to get out of here because it's already 11 on 2. Read the 17th verse and look at that. And, and for your teaching and your learning, now, I want you to really Today, if y'all get a chance, I want you to really go over and read, really, in Matthew chapter 10. If you can't read the whole chapter, it's a good chapter. And try to just read, don't read it in one verse. Read, when you study the Word of God, read it in every type of verse. The more you read it, the more the Holy Spirit is going to give you reverence. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for those who are stretching their arms out to you. For everyone who wants to give their life to Christ, for everyone who's thought about giving their life to Christ, but don't understand what all the different games that see going on in the body of Christ. Father God, let them know and understand. It ain't got to be to a man that they give themselves, but they give themselves to you in their bedroom, wherever they are. Let them stretch out their hand and believe and declare the decree in the name of Jesus. So as I live, Father God, that my life be consumed with you, that you touch my heart. And when you touch my heart, Father God, make me, train me, design me, and engineer what you want me to be. I want to give my life to you in whatever ways and means it may be, Father God, that I may not be as the world, but when the time comes for you to bring me home, I'll be right in the place with you. Father, I'm asking you to bless me. I tell him. Bless me, Lord. Show me the direction. Show me how I can spread the word to my family and friends in such a way that they may be healed and set free from every calamity, every problem, not with a religious spirit, not even say that negatively, not with a, a sense of, of, of a worldly sense, but a godly sense, truly, through the mimic of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I'm asking you to bless the man and woman God who's stretching their hands out, see them in the spirit. Father God, I'm asking you to anoint their hands with oil in the name of Jesus, declare the word over their life. Lord, free them from the very demonic pressures and sins and all the things that's in the world that they may truly know that you are a deliverer. And you got the ability to take over and take them. You got the ability to take over and transform them out of any situation. It doesn't matter how hard the situation is. Father, I believe you are sprinkling the very power of the presence of the Holy Spirit within them. And when you sprinkle it on them, Father God, they'll be a new creature. Not in the terms of right away, but Father God, because of the grace and mercy you placed upon their life. That you'll continue to work them and show them and direct them and guide them, even in the midst of their slipping. Father, God, help them to start the first process of just reaching a hand out to you and saying, Lord, I love you. I don't know how to change, but I want you to change me. Father, God, I declare the word, I decree the words, I send it through the Spirit in every area of the world, Father God. All those who are reaching out, that they may truly know that you are God and you love them right in the very conditions and situation that they are in. Father God, you have declared your word according to Ephesians 1 and 5. You said you have already predestined them according to your own will. And you set them aside according to your own love. Not what the world is, but what you love them. 
So, Father God, we believe and declare the creed according to Psalm 46 that you have present help in their life. And whatever it is that they may need, whatever they lack in, Father God, give unto them double. Whatever the kinker on, whatever the locust, the past is stolen from the Father, give it back to them double in the name of Jesus. That it may be shaken down and running over as you begin to pour into their bosom. Bless them on this day. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I just declare blessings over all the all the families, all the nieces, all the nephews, all the sons, all the daughters, in every area, even in this household. I command the power of God to follow over my sons, over my daughters, all the grandchildren, over my beautiful wife, Father, all her sisters and brothers, all of my sisters and brothers. That made me truly know that I sent to do the work of the kingdom of God. For I transform, change, convict, and arrest. Right now, in your presence and powerful mighty name, we plead the blood on every word. That's what is going forth. It will not come back void, but it has already accomplished all that therein. These things we speak not of ourselves, but the power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord. Amen. Men and women, God, it's always a blessing. It's always a blessing to be with you at HNOC Studios. As we get ready to sign off our shows here, we got the woman of God, Pastor Patty Ellis, coming up here in just a little bit. Right at 1230, you'll catch her on our Axie show coming up here. And it's always a pleasure to be with her. For those who want to actually, um, I actually, our podcast team, we thank you God for coming in with podcasts. I actually, pod, I mean, be our podcast chasers. We thank you for being with us here, our Podbean show. It's a blessing for you guys to be with us. We're going to let you guys get out of here, Podbean. We thank God for y'all being with us here at HNOC Studios. It's just such a blessing. For all those coming into our actually um, cast stations, we thank y'all for being with us on our cast team. It's always a blessing for you guys to be with us. I want to get everything in position here to pull out what we need to pull out and get what we need to have going. But it's just a blessing to be with you guys on the cast. Cast is always a great part of the work we're doing here at HNOC Studios. All our friends out there in Romania, we've been doing a lot of work out in Romania. We've been kind of hitting a lot of places in Pakistan, but we've been going to more of the eastern areas like Asia. We've been going out in the European areas, Russia, on our BTR shows. We've been reaching a lot of great work out there in the European countries. We thank God for the UK and how they've been coming on board with us to continue to do the work that we're doing here at HNLC Studios. As well as our friends out there in our African countries, we thank God for them also. But our cast team, we thank you guys for being with us. We're going to exit out this time. We love you guys. Y'all take care, man and woman of God. So we're going to believe and declare and decree as we go off these lines that the power of God is working with them. And as he works with them, he'll show them direction, the wisdom, and knowledge. For all those who are not actually uh, Facebook channels, want to get our actually, um, cast team to get them out of here. And I'll tell you, it's just a pleasure for you to be with me. Hey, but look, just like I said before, I don't want to sound repetitive, but the woman of God, Pastor Patty Ellison, is coming up here in just a little bit as we exit out of <clears throat> most of these shows here at HNOC Studios to our actually um, live um, YouTube team. We, we're going to pull out on you guys at this time. It's a pleasure you guys being with us as well. But the, the woman of God, Pastor Patty Ellison, is coming up here in just a little bit, and we want to make sure you guys get a chance to be with her in the studio as she go forth right at 1230. Uh, p.m. here. That's going to be Central Standard Time here in the city of uh, Plano, Texas. And she's always got a great word that she's bringing from the kingdom of God. I thank God for all my good friends. My good friends Blackwell. I got a lot of good college buddies that I hang out with. And they're good friends. Very good friends. And I didn't see them in years. Charles McSwain. I want to uh, set up my blessings out and our blessings out and pray for that not just Charles McSwain's mom, but all the moms who are going through situations, all the dads that are going through situations. We are fast approaching Father's Day, and we're praying, declaring, decree to God to keep them safe in the time that they can enjoy the Father's Day with their fathers. And it may be the last round. We don't know, but we want God to, we want to pray for all the fathers who are living as of right now and all the fathers who are going on to be the kingdom of God and that the power of the Holy Spirit continue to touch the men and women of God who had fathers that going on to build the kingdom of God, then this father they come that he had comfort their heart knowing that he raised them and had them in such a way that he got them to what they are. So we want to always acknowledge the ones who are going on and the ones who are here and continue to pray to the ones who are going through these particular um, infirmities in the hospitals and whatever these was going on with these technologies. We just want to pray for people. People are going through things all over the world, especially our young people who are going through a lot of the mental stuff. You know, you know, teenage suicide is way up. Because it's a lot, I'm not going to blame it all on the pandemic, but there's a lot of things that's going on with teenagers. We want to pray for our young people. We really want to keep them in prayer, keep them lifted up. Because I've seen the experience what goes on with some of these young people. They're under a lot of pressure, especially after what happened with this pandemic and all this isolation that's been going on. And the social skills that they need that they really uh, function with has been taken away. So we want to really keep them in prayer. Because we didn't have that when we were young. We had this opportunity to get out and run around, play, do all the things. So all the parents who are dealing with these issues, we know how those things are because some of us as parents have dealt with those situations in our kids' life. And we really 
we're going to pray for you and keep you lifted up that that area in your life will continue to come uh, to fruition. So I'm just reaching my hands in the name of Jesus toward the children that are going through these afflictions in their life. Father God, your word declared and decreed when Jesus saw the very uh, the very uh, multitude, he said he began to heal every one of them. We just declare, Father God, that it be a healing in the name of Jesus. Touch every one of the young children, all the school systems, all the mothers, Father God, who's caring for the kids in this condition. We just lift that demonic depression and that that spirit of uh, suicide off of them, I see them more. In the name of we break it right now by the power and of the authority of the Holy Spirit. We command the enemy has got to get out. It's got to leave your children because you declare suffering young children to come unto me to forbid them not as the kingdom of God. Father, we want you to look over them, transform and change their mind and make them a mighty and greater generation than ever before. Lord, we loose the word in the spirit. We claim the word according to Ephesians 121, Father, of every prince and power and dominion, not only named in this world, but everyone is to come. And Father, we believe according to the word of God, according to Luke 10 and 19, that they are trade up on all serpents and scorpions, the ideas of ideology that try to come into their mind to pull them away from your kingdom. Kingdom and be what they need them to be, Father God, by the things and the traditions of the world, Father God. They may know and understand that they're called and with a destiny to do the work that you call them to. Father God, bless every one of our young children. Raise them up mightily, not with emotion, Father God, with spiritual understanding and guidance and teaching. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, command word over all the young people, over all the world. That they be saved, sanctified, filled with the precious power of the Holy Spirit and doused in the blood. We command this word to go forth. We put it to the third heaven. That's where it will not come back void, but it will accomplish all that and therein. These things I speak not of myself, but the power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. We want to keep our young children lifted up. Keep all the young people lifted up. I got young children. You have young children. Even some of our adults are going through some of these things. We see a lot of news. A lot of things going on with adults. Yeah. We just want to keep everybody in prayer. And we want to keep everybody lifted up. And we're going to believe that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit are freedom from all these abnormalities that's going on in and around their life. Man, we've got some blessings. I've said before, we love you guys. We thank you all for being with us here at HNOC Studios. To my teams out there, our Facebook team, our actually, uh Instagram team, all you guys on our Roku stations. Hey, look, we thank you guys for being with us. Uh, actually, uh, Lula stations, we thank you guys for being with us. It's just so much that we do here at HNOC Studios. We thank God for it. And we just continue to just expand the globe as we reach to other parts of the world that we've never known, seen, or heard before. And we thank God for giving us an opportunity to do this work. And we thank all the guys who have been a part of the work we're doing here at HNOC Studios. That God will continue to bless you in your endeavor as you go forth to do the work of the kingdom of God. To actually, you, to actually, um, uh, podcast team, not the podcast team, but actually um, uh, Facebook team, we, we thank you guys. We're going to pull you guys way out this time. We thank you guys for being with us, and it's a pleasure of uh, y'all being in the studio with us. Amen. So we thank God for them, and we uh, continue to just keep them lifted up in prayer. We just declare the word of God that in the process that the Holy Spirit will continue to work with them and keep them safe in their life, even here at our actually HNLC uh, Spreaker Team 2 studio. We thank God for you guys also. Until then, man and woman of God, y'all be blessed.